Hello and Namaste. I have been learning Vedanta and physics from childhood. They are the two loves of my life. I find them both equally fascinating. I find several similarities in both of them. However, there is one place where physics and Vedanta can never find common ground. Physics deals with the material realm of matter and it could never venture into the field of consciousness, which is the domain of Vedanta. That's what I thought. Before I go further, I want to tell you about Vedanta's view of consciousness. Consciousness is not a product or an emergent property of life as science claims. Consciousness is the fundamental principle from which the whole universe emerged. Universe is created by consciousness, it exists in consciousness and resolves into consciousness. Consciousness existed before the creation and will remain after the creation. This consciousness principle which creates the universe and pervades every aspect of it is called Brahman. In Vedanta, there is a famous and oft-repeated example given to explain this concept. The universe is equated to a dream and Brahman to a dreamer. The relationship between you and your dream perfectly represents the relationship between Brahman and the universe. This is very important to our discussion, so I am going to delve a little deeper into this. Please stick with me. There are three important relationships that you can derive from the dream analogy. First, the entire dream is born in you, exists in you and disappears in you. You create, sustain and destroy your dream. Okay? This is the easy part. Second, nothing that happens in your dream has an impact on you. What do I mean by this? You can win a lottery in your dream and you wouldn't be richer by a penny. You could murder someone in your dream and you will not be punished for it. You are untouched by your dream, although it exists in you. The third and perhaps the most difficult relationship to understand is this. What is the real relationship between you and your dream? I said before, nothing that happens in your dream is real for you. What is the one thing that happens in your dream which is true even when you wake up? Take a second to think about it. The only true relationship between you and your dream is this. You are a witness of your dream. You observe your dream. This was true while you were dreaming and is true after you wake up. Why is this so important? Nothing can happen and nothing can exist in the dream world without you witnessing it. Think about it for a second. Can anything exist in your dream without you seeing it? In fact, the question itself is wrong. The objects in your dream get their existence because you witness it. The very act of you seeing it brings things into existence in your dream. Isn't it? Again, take a moment to think about it. Nothing can exist in your dream that you don't see. It is your seeing that brings things into existence. Brahman and the universe have a similar relationship. Everything is born in Brahman, exists in Brahman and resolves in Brahman. But Brahman is not an active participant in the process. It is only the witness to the universe. That is why Brahman is referred to in Vedanta as Sakshi Chaitanyam, the witness consciousness. I always thought that Vedanta and science can never meet when it comes to consciousness. According to science, consciousness is a product of life. In the whole universe, our tiny little planet is perhaps the only place where it evolved. Compare this with the view that consciousness is the very foundation of our universe. How can there be a meeting point between these two dramatically different and divergent views? 
in the next couple of posts i want to talk about how this barrier between consciousness and material world is breaking down in physics let us begin with newton's laws and maxwell's equations the foundational laws of classical physics there is no mention of consciousness in them human beings have no place in the laws of physics we happen to appear in a small insignificant part of the universe due to the interplay of the laws of physics the universe will go on without us our presence is not really of any consequence in the grand scheme of things we are just humble explorers of the forces of physics that shaped us we'll exist for a very short period of time and vanish the universe will go on governed by these timeless laws of physics this is the view of classical physics this grand view of universe began to crumble with the arrival of einstein his theory of general relativity shook the very foundations of physics i am not going to explain relativity to you don't run away i just want to talk about some of the implications of relativity according to classical physics time and space are absolute what do i mean by this if i measure 10 seconds passing in my watch and an alien in andromeda galaxy is measuring 10 seconds pass in his watch both of us would be in sync there'll be no discrepancy between our measurements the alien and me would experience the passage of time identically this is because time is absolute according to classical physics it is one and the same everywhere einstein's relativity demolished this notion it said time depends on the vantage point of the observer if you're moving close to the speed of light time itself slows down for you people traveling at different speeds will experience different times same is true for space too different people traveling at different speeds will measure two points in space differently space itself shrinks and expands depending on the point of view of the observer relativity erases the distinction between what is and what appears the observer was no longer a passive non consequential entity he became central to the observation he could no longer be an insignificant objective figure looking at the universe too small to affect it in any way time itself slows down and objects change dimensions based on his vantage point his point of view became integral to the laws of physics the act of observation itself shaping reality what a radical view what an ancient view the sakshi the observer the witness slowly began to emerge the observer became more and more central to the functioning of the universe einstein's theory was the first crack in the wall then it all came crumbling down with the emergence of quantum physics can the universe exist in the absence of an observer this question moved from the realm of philosophy to mainstream physics i am going to stop here for now we are just beginning our journey of discovery of the power of the observer the sakshi chaitanyam in the next couple of posts we'll see how physics is discovering that there is nothing passive about being a witness thank you for watching please do subscribe like and share this with your friends press the bell icon for reminders until next week namaste